Hey yo, hey yo. Jalebi the kid. Y'all know what it is. We out in Chennai, let's go. If I have to give a shit about the kids who do exist with the cap, then I tell them that it's never been lit. If you wanna get the city on the map, then you gotta stop acting like a bitch. I'ma take it in a way that they can't even go swerve with. I stole the steering wheel, you don't even deserve that power drive. Yeah, you know I'm so acerbic, acidic when I make they face melt Yeah, you heard when he kill it, then they gotta go and eat it like a skillet Feeling like I'm cooking, you can see me on the grill, I'm flipping burgers with the beef Then we sitting, chilling in the back, bring the heat Yeah, you know I'm too damn real, with the shit I spit, I'm too legit I came in here, I never miss, like Hoodville, and I'm high as fuck Way past Everest more like I'm somewhere out and out of space Chillin' on Elon Musk's favorite place That was Mars, oh damn Olympus Mons With the grace, put it in your face Apple rate, now we been a race Apple seed, by the way I fucking plan it You can find me in the canyon Shootin' like I'm Royal Banyan I don't think they understand it in the valley, that's uncanny Cause they all a bunch of robots AI gonna hand y'all that dopamine rush When you came with the scroll But me, I'm Harry Potter So you already know That the lightning in my forehead Yeah, that's gonna go explode Out the wall when I spit my song Had it in control Ooh, Like he's playing PS5 You know I said it too alive They wanna tell me that I gotta get it On that do or die Who is that? I don't know Stone cold, by the way I smoke up on the Buddha Leave your mind fucking petrified yeah, this shit is off the top, never go and stop Sip it like Ciroc, cut it like some scissors Cause it's on the fucking shop and block Wait, hit him with the block Like it's Legos, had to keep it with the waffles Like he ego, by the way, I never let go Then you telling me I keep it on the schedule So check my calendar I feel like I got the sword, Excalibur yeah, my shit is kinda wavy, like it's a tsunami You just gotta pay me in a couple years to hear every word I fucking say, G And the life I live is crazy I eat the beat slow, tell him here that I know every cheat code Stole the fucking iron, call me Magneto Wait, I'm out the matrix, feeling like I'm Neo they can't do it like me, keep it primo Feeling like I got the hundreds, that's a C-note And I flow up in the C so then I make them be so seasick By the way, I give them he g g d put it on repeat, bro Run that back, got that trap Tell him right here that I gotta go rap He hit the chopper, I took to the doctor All these cats, cause they fucking whack Shit, I don't even wanna rap no more Killed a bull like a motherfucking matador Had a score, then you know we rolled and smoked it Damn, I came with the fucking colors like it's holy You cannot go fold me like a piece of paper seven times Cause I stacked the paper up, yeah, you know me Commas, need a couple of them Fuck it, what the budget gonna be? I'm too above it, no discussion, I'm disgusting I came back, my homie got this shit up in his fingertips Cause he's sitting over there just crushing Woo! Let's go Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music for Days podcast where we get to know more about artists here from the Chennai scene. But today, we have an artist here coming all the way from the Bangalore scene and we have Carter, aka Jalebi the Kid. What's, What's up, up my man? How you chillin', doing? Chilling, chilling, bro. Thank you for having me. Happy to be here. Chennai, you're beautiful. And uh, yeah, man, just, uh, you know, we, we came down for a couple of days. Me, I think you had Budniks on here yesterday. Yes, we did. Um, and we just, yeah, we wanted to come through, you know, South got to stand together. Hell yeah. So Hell yeah. yeah. We're so happy to have you on today, you know. Welcome to Music for Days. So let's Appreciate get right that. into it. Can you tell us more about yourself? I mean, what's to tell? I am I am resident uh I'm resident Gora rapper in Bangalore. <laughs> um I've lived in India. I'm from North Carolina, back in America. I've lived in India for seven years. And you know, I've uh, I've done hip hop out here for five, and a lot of what I do is just trying to or, like run, organize, and grow the underground scene in Bangalore because I feel like it really could be something that changes the way right. uh, rap, Indian rap, Indian hip hop in particular is looked at by the world. 
um, you know. Especially when you look at like the number of rappers coming out of Bangalore who've like, for example, Brother V, mm -hmm. he's at the top right now, like, and he started off with the underground scene right in Bangalore. So mm -hmm. it's great that you're making all that effort to bring it all up, man. Appreciate Absolutely, it. bro. I mean, I, I, it's like, there's so many people who have so much talent and if, if, if people who can do something don't, those people aren't going to get an opportunity, exactly. right? Because, you know, the art and industry are, are... Hand in hand. Well, they, they should be. Yeah. Uh, often, I would say, co content and industry are hand in hand. Mm. Right? Art and industry, when it's good, they are. Otherwise, you get, you know... Shit. <laughs> what we call, no, what we call in Bangalore, uh, we have a term for uh, clout-based life forms. Oh, right, yeah. And, um, you know, not like that that's really the worst thing, but... You know, I'm from North Carolina, right? So J. Cole is is our role model. And, you know, no one can say that that man, even though he's, you know, in some top five conversations worldwide, he's still out here trying to push the art. Yeah. Right. Despite so, it all. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's sort of like, that's what we try to bring out. That's And that's one of the things that I try to do, you know, with whatever I can contribute in Bangalore. Perfect, man. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, could you tell us more about this? Now, your name is, of course, Jalebi the Kid. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with that name? Uh, that's a funny story. <laughs> I go. mean, so... Uh, to answer that, I kind of just got to tell you about my journey through hip hop. Uh, you know, I've been I've been freestyling for about a little over a decade now. Wow. Um, but I never took rap seriously as like, oh, I want to be a rapper, right? You know, and uh, I had moved to India in 2017, um, and what I really got into was meditation. Um, and I quit my job to be basically, to be a Buddhist and figure out how to, how to do spirituality with my life, right? I was working for some tech company out in Whitefield, Bangalore. Um, right. and I got this lineage, this, this guy, uh, in the U.S. gave me this Tibetan Buddhist lineage and, and he sort of pointed me, he was like, there's something spiritual in freestyle you should go check that out. Um, I've actually been through a couple of different rap names, right? And Jalebi the Kid was just this one, you know, first it was Vajrapani. Uh, that reflecting the Buddhism, and then I cut that to Vajra, and then I just start going by Carter. Uh, Jalebi the Kid actually comes out of, and, and, and we'll get to this here. See, I got this country alter ego, uh, me, and there's another fella named Dope Boy Ghost back in Bangalore. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we started making country rap out in Bangalore, and he was Doty McGee, I was uh, Billy the Kid. Then we decided Billy was not, that damn thing was not country enough, <laughs> and in terms of India. So, Jalebi the Kid was born. And after that, I, you know, and eventually I just, it, it stuck. It, it, it's fun. It, I don't know. I, it, you resonate it, a lot with that name. Well, I do. I, in some ways, I feel like, you know, I've, I've been here seven years. I don't have white friends here in India, right? I, I, everyone I'm around, everyone I live with, everyone I make music with is Desi. Mm -hmm. And so Jalebi the Kid is in part this thing that like, you know, I, you know I'm Gora. I'll always be a Gora. But like, you know, I earn this little bit, right? You call me <laughs> Jalebi, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's that's you know that's where that came from, and it is. It's just like the thing is, and and if you don't know what a jalebi is, it just sounds like a cool word. Oh, <laughs> right. Everyone in America is like, oh, what is that? That's such a cool name. Um, and then they look it up and like, they, honestly, when they find out what it is, they're kind of disappointed. They're like, this is like uh, a little sweet swirl. Yeah, yeah. But um, no, nah, man. I mean, it's just like I feel like sometimes you shouldn't take yourself too seriously. And um, that's kind of what this is in some ways. Right. So like after like, so your alternate, alternate names before Jalebi the Kid were Carter. Then you had, what, what were the other names? Vajrapani. Vajrapani and I was yeah. sorted to Vajra. And that's just like, see, when I started out, I wanted to just do Buddhist. Free, like freestyling and Buddhist rap. As spiritual as it can get. As spiritual as it can get, you know. But the thing about that is that that I found as I was in this scene, as I was around all these other rappers and as I was taking that forward, that was limiting, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because I'm not a monk, you know. I, I have my vices, right? I had the things I think about that aren't just about liberation and... It ended up being one of those things where I sort of just, I found myself contradicting that name. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I kind of went in that direction. I mean, I still meditate. I still view freestyling as a high-level spiritual practice and all. But, uh, you know, started here and now we're over here. Perfect, man. That's, that's so, so great to hear. What a story. All right, you know, let's get into a little bit of a fun segment already, you know. Mm -hmm. So we have a rapid fire segment here on the podcast. Let's go. Let's go. Lil Wayne or Gucci Mane? Lil Wayne. Great. Joy Badass or Nipsey Hussle? Nipsey Hussle. But I will say 
Uh, I think Miss, I, Mr. Mr. Badass is a more impressive technical rapper, but Nipsey just has a soul, man. He's just like, like everything, everything he says, everything he does, you just feel this man's been through so much and he still wants to bring good to the world, right? Yeah. Um, Joey Badass is a little more in that like B.O.B. lane where he's kind of, you know, he's kind of trying to be about liberation, but he's also just, he still want to be out here smashing bitches and shit. So, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, man, definitely Nipsey. Sorry, next one. Perfect. NF or Logic? <laughs> Third option? <laughs> no, I mean, like, I, I, okay, I don't listen to NF. Okay. Uh, you know, I just, I think when, by the time he came out, I was done being angsty. Ah, uh, no, I right? get what you mean. Because uh, he's so over emo sometimes. He's, you know, and, and yeah, I mean, like, and I like Logic, but Logic, he's just like one, he, he, I, he I don't know, man. He, he's just not. He runs around saying he's in top five all time, and it's just like, no, you're not. No, you're not. You know, you got you got you got. He's it's got a nice chopper flow. Yeah. But like, uh, and he he occasionally does some good stuff. You know, but like, I don't know. I'd put Logic in the top fifty rappers in the world, right? Like. Yeah. True. I mean, I mean top, top hundred probably, but like he's, I think I you know. Not your forte. No, Easy. I would I would probably pick Logic though, just because I've listened to more of his stuff than NF. Fair. Okay. All right now, <laughs> Macklemore. Or MGK. MGK, bro. I mean, Ma where, where is Macklemore? Who is that these days? I mean, besides, I, I'll never forgive Macklemore, although it was the most appropriate album title of all time for the Grammy. Dethroning Kendrick, right? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 that's not, he didn't dethrone anything, bro. The Academy was just like, I don't want to say they were racist, but they were basically just uh, racist. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Especially, look, and there's also the fact that which album they dismissed, right? Good Kid, Mad City, bro. I mean, nah. to, like, to date, I could argue my favorite, my favorite song, at least if I was like, maybe song period, is, is Money Trees. Money Trees, oh. You know, and that, that, that album is just so, it, it has all the things that Kendrick would go in to do with his, where he kind of pushed more into poetry and, and not trying to just make bangers, but that album's full of bangers. Yeah, it's poetry and bangers. Exactly, at the same time. exactly. So, yeah, all right, now let's go. Okay, fine. <laughs> all right, another white rapper comparison. Lil Dicky. Or Jack Harlow? I would say Jack Harlow, um, you know, simply because I felt like Lil Dicky did not evolve. Mm. You know, that Lil Dicky was this dude who basically just sat there. He, you know, his shtick was like, ha ha, I'm a self-aware right rapper. You know, the anti-rap, the last form of rap, like whatever that, you know. And, and then he just didn't do anything else than that. And so after about like five or six sort of media cycles of that it was like what else you got you know and he's he's really good bro if you watch him i mean harlow harlow's a different story but i don't know man i just i always want a little dicky to push past being so like haha i have a little penis you know <laughs> uh and i'm jewish but like anyways i'll put harlow on there because Har harlow's harlow's one of those white boys who yeah. like harlow's a white boy i discovered because you know my homies back home mm -hmm. they were bumping him Ooh. right they were like yo you gotta check out this new white boy bro and i was like who and they're like Shh. You know, and, and then I was like, well, proud, proud of you. Proud of you, Mr. Harlow. I think yeah. even from a musical standpoint, Jack Harlow's probably a tiny bit harder than Lil Dicky. Well, he's you know? just like, he's got, he's got swag, bro. Yeah. You it's know, I remember, I remember when What's Poppin' came out, and it was like, I mean, we'll see where Harlow's career goes, how versatile he is, how much longevity is there. But, like, he's got, he, 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 he's got that swag, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the celebrity persona and everything. Yeah, fair. All right, now... All right, now let's go a little OG. Mm -hmm. Fat Joe or Big Pun? I would say Big Pun, bro. Big Pun is just like, he's just raw. I mean, Fat Joe is raw too. They're both New York. They're both, you know, they both put, you know, put the work in. But Big Pun, man, he just like, and his vocal texture, right? Oh, He's just, he's hard, man. I still bump some of that stuff. So yeah, I'll say Pun. Yeah, especially like I, I mean, I would pick Pun purely from the whole. You remember, remember Hypnotizer, where he goes like, "Dead in the middle of little, literally, little did he know that he went to a middle man who didn't, who didn't do diddly. Yeah, 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 of course, bro. No, everyone knows that Ooh. one. I mean, for me, especially uh, at that time, bro. Like, well, that's that's the thing about him is that if you, like, you know, I mean, there were a lot of rappers back in the day. You know, you look at like Rock, him, Eric B, these these boys, like, they had crazy schemes and bars. But Big Pun had that, but he also managed to sort of, uh, you know, 
be a precursor to the the the, the more the wave, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, like he's one of those people you listen to and you're like, wow, these schemes, these flows, these schemes are impressive. Like he, we didn't even have trap beats back then. Correct. And you could, and you're like, he's 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 killing it on the boom bap and on the trap level, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, Perfect, I'll go with, I'll go with pun there. All right, another OG comparison, Rakim or Andre three thousand. Andre, bro. And honestly, that's just because I'm from the South. Oh, okay. You know, Rock. Because I was worried. You didn't even flinch. I was like, whoa. Bro, I mean, look, man. I grew up listening to Outkast. Oh, You right. know, uh, one of the first song, one of the first things I ever started freestyling on uh, is there's this, like, nine, ten-minute track called Spotty Yachty Dope Alicious Angel. Uh-huh. Um, and we would, and that was one of the first things I started to freestyle on. And, you know, I mean, to me, like, uh, up there with Money Trees is uh, AT Aliens, the song. Right. Now throw your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. Like, I like Rakim, but Rakim doesn't make my soul bounce. Oh, right. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, Out, yeah. Uh, Andre is like... Andre is Andre. Andre is Andre. I mean, he did just give us 87 minutes of a flute. I'm not mad at it, but like, <laughs> uh, you know, we want more We want more of the old him, you know? But Perfect. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Then, okay. Chris Brown or Asha? Hmm. I mean, see, I don't like Chris Brown's personal, although, uh, you know, I don't like people who beat women. Yeah, it's yeah. not something yeah. I, 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 hate to go, I hate to go there, but I can't, I can't sit in, in a public space and just be like, oh, this dude's dope. I, I, I like Chris Brown's music more. Um, if he had never done all that, I think he would have been the next Michael Jackson because he's the only guy who has that sound and can dance. Mm-hmm. But, you know, like... Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll give it to I'll give it to CB right. for that one. Yeah. All right. Justin Timberlake or Bruno Mars? Ooh, ooh that's a tough one. <laughs> I mean, come on, bro. I, ain't got I, time. You got to pick. J- JT, JT. All right. Just keep it rolling. All right. All right. Alicia Keys or Mariah Carey? I would say Alicia. Um, Mariah is more. She's a little more pop to me. Mm-hmm. Um, Alicia's got more rawness. She yeah, does. Agree, she yeah. does. And you know, I also, if you're American, just like. Starting in like late October, you just hear Mariah Carey's "All I Want for Christmas Is You" for the next it's two time, and a half man. months. All oh, and you just—it's a good song, but it's—it's it's, uh, it, it gets annoying. Next right. one. All right, now uh, Jennifer Lopez or Beyonce? Rihanna. Okay, okay. Snoop Dogg or Wiz Khalifa? Snoop. Okay. Nicki Minaj or Cardi B? Absolutely, Nicki, bro. Cardi yes. does not have like. The cultural Ca- impact, right? It's not, no, not even that, bro. Oh. Cardi just is not very versatile as a musician. Mm. Like, and she, and she isn't, she's nowhere near Nikki's technical level, right? Nikki is somebody who, you know, always had that big ass, you know, that, that sexualized persona. True. But she also will bring bars whenever required, yeah. right? Yeah. Card- Cardi, I feel like, you know, especially once she kind of got in her lane, she was just like, I'm going to be ratchet. And she let I I like I like old Cardi, I like Red Bottoms, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, the Bodak Yellow era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That 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 stuff was harder to me. Her, you know, the new stuff. I'll take Nikki's new stuff. All right, done. Fifty Cent or Ice Cube. Fifty. Perfect. Wu Tang or N.W.A. There it is. <laughs> Honestly. Five. Four. Wu Tang. Okay. All right. You know Wu Tang. Just they. I don't know, bro. They. Cream. It's not even that, man. They just. When I look, like when you look back at it, NWA, you can sort of see, like they started this thing and then people built on it. Yeah. No one is still doing what wait, Method Man is still hard as hell today, Red right? Method Man, do all of them, all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Perfect. All right, now let's conclude the rapid fire on this one. Lil Uzi Word or Playboy Carti? Bro, honestly, I ain't really know these SoundCloud rappers that uh, well. Okay. I would say, I would say Juice World. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll take it. I'll take it. So that concludes our rapid fire segment. So now let's get into more of the more of your life. Absolutely. Now bro. you did co-found Cipher Cipher, mm-hmm. the Cipher Cipher Collective with your team, right? Mm-hmm. Now what made you want to create a space like that? Because I'm sure, especially with your situation, it would take a heck of a lot of your time, a heck of a lot of risk. I mean, anything does, but taking on that thing, what made you you know want to do it? So that comes back to what I was talking about, about why I got into doing rap full time, which was it was from a spiritual perspective, right? right? And, and for me, like, when I, when I really was getting into that, it was 2019 and there was a uh, Gully Boy, right? Mm-hmm. 
Um, and that just brought all these rappers out of the woodwork. And we just like, just sort of out of the blue, in 2019, I started having ciphers at my house. Oh. Because back then, you know, even back then I was still hard and freestyle, right? And, and, and because it was this new scene, I, it was just like orders of magnitude above most of what people were bringing out there. So like with that, you know, I found that it was really just something that called to me to just bring, bring these artists together there and share that energy with them. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and to me, that's that's really why, you know, I, I used to help organize a, a, a collective that, you know, isn't around as much anymore called One and Off. And so there were some personal issues there. OK. Um, and then, you know, but we always love ciphers. I've always loved ciphers. And I just I love to freestyle. I love to bring that energy. And the truth is, like, I, what happened was it just it wasn't like, oh, I didn't think like, oh, I want to go start a rap collective. Right. Um, it was more just like, it's what I'm good at. Mm -hmm. You know, I have business experience. I, I, I founded companies, I've worked for like major tech companies and so on. And so bringing that to this scene, like, you know, I know how to go negotiate good terms from a venue for, for artists who don't have any clout, mm -hmm. right? I can go get the money from the venue for those guys. And, and so I just kind of came into that role and, and as it sort of, you know, Bloomed, Came together. Yeah, bloomed and matured, it would just sort of became clear that like that was something that I was supposed to do. Um, it's sort know. of like one of those things where you just figured it out along the way. You saw the potential of it and the growth of it. Perfect, man. Perfect. Absolutely. Now, as you started doing these ciphers, how, what was the Bangalore crowd's reaction to it? Because like still ra rap, it's not a new thing in India, but it's still not so caught up to the point where how it's in America, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, what, how was their reaction to it initially? How has it been now? Over the time. So, I mean, you know, personally, just there's, you know, the, uh, personally, there's this sort of, I'm always exotic here. Mm -hmm. When they see me doing it, they're like, whoa, kya go rahe? Huh? you know, like, so, uh, really? yes, dude. I mean, it just, it, it, it is what it is, but, uh, you know, sort of more, and that's, so that's my personal thing. I, I can't go out anywhere without being stared at, right? Yeah. Um, but you know, more generally, like people see, I'll answer this like this, right? Every culture has their way of enjoying music and dancing, right? I'll, I'll start with dance. You know, you go to like a hard techno scene, right? You'll see a lot of this face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what face you go if you go to most like pubs and clubs in India, right? <laughs> yeah. And they just like, they, they, you know, they just want to just like had their mind shut off on joy and dopamine, right? Correct, correct. Um, and, and so, like, hip-hop out here, people, people love the energy. Mm -hmm. People, they, they, they love a chopper flow. They love that sort of... Doo -doo -doo. But it's taken a lot of time for, the, for, for a couple of the other elements, in particular, like, the lyricism and the bars and, and the, the sort of attention to what you're actually saying. That's taken time. Right. Um, so are you saying that from an entertainment point of view, when the crowd looks at your group perform, they're able to take away the energy, but not the bars? Honestly, like, so, and we run this out on a, you know, the main street in Church Street, it's called Bangalore, right? We run this out there all the time. And on Bangalore, yeah, you know, we'll go hard and they'll just all be around. But most of them, I can tell they don't hear what's said. Uh -huh. Like you watch what is, like, they'll react to like, someone will slow it down and, you know, have some, pardon my French here, so I'm going to slow it down and be like, you know, I'm out here shooting and I never miss. I took your girl and she's sucking my, you know, and that, the crowd will be like, oh. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then someone will have a bar about, like I had this bar yesterday, actually the cypher here appreciated, but if I were to rap something on Church Street, I was like, you know, like, I only want the real, I'm tired of fakes. Plant a tree so big my roots break through the tectonic plates. Oh. They won't catch that. They won't, yeah. No. Uh, but you you spit a bar like that in a cipher in North Carolina or New York, and, uh, and you know, all those OGs are gonna be like, oh shit. Okay, he's that, speaking. Huh? Yeah, huh, he's speaking. Huh. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's that I would say like, and it's 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 getting there. You know, I mean, it's had what like 40, 50 years to mature in America. Um, so all things take time, but I I do think that like when you see. The interesting thing is when they realize the crowd here, they don't un really understand that freestyling is like a thing until you demonstrate that you're doing it. Okay. And once you demonstrate that you're doing it, then they're like, oh my God. This is happening in real time. It's oh, happening right now. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and actually, I think that, you know, here you have a lot of, uh, you know, especially classic Indian art forms are very much... Uh, More prominent, uh, yeah. Well, no, no, but often the performer there is looked upon as a vessel for the deity. Mm -hmm. Right, you know, the, the avatar like that. Yeah. And and freestyle, you had Budniks on here. Yes. You know, when Budniks starts going, you feel that, mm, where, where did this come from into this guy, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and it's like that, you know, like, I feel like once the crowd understands what you're doing, then then the ones who are tuned in, they'll just be so about you. Mm -hmm. Okay, man, that's perfect. But as these artists are coming out, right, even though y'all are like, you know, you have to be supportive of each other and everything, but... What about the level of beefing amongst these artists that you work with? Is there a level of beefing, first of all? And like, you know, tell us more about how it is in Bangalore. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> I, I, will, I will try to keep this a little succinct. Essential, so, in Cypher Cypher, we settle things in rap, and rap is what matters, right? Me, uh, Budniks, Dope Boy Ghost, the, you know, the, the people who really put the heart into the thing. We're the kind of people who, for us, like... If I have a problem with those people I, and we haven't talked it out, I, the next time we're free song together, I'm going to rap about it. Okay. I'm going to look them in the face and be like, hey, you were being a bitch. Yeah. You know. Um, I have it like it is. And, and, and what that means is that that energy is transmuted and worked through. Right? And so within our own community, like, thus far, we don't have those problems because everyone sees each other regularly and raps together. And, like... You know, when I'm spitting a bar and then this guy picks it up right away from me, like, even if we're kind of mad at each other, like, we're just going to, again, that's like, that's dopamine, that's serotonin, that's, that's like a connection. And, you know, so within the community that, that, that we don't really have that, that energy. We have like friendly competition. Everyone just wants to be a better rapper. Right. Outside of the community, in a particular, the, the kind of the scene in, in Bangalore doesn't have beef like this. They, 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 they're pretty supportive of each other. The English scene in Bangalore is full of a bunch of just super petty nonsense uh, that I don't really want to get into too much on this show. But all I will say is that when you're when you say you're a rapper and someone sort of gives you their like, you know, they make you feel some way because of something in rap. A lot of these boys, their instinct is to take it out of rap. Oh, okay. And I don't mean, you know, in, in America, you have that too, and that leads to proper violence. Mm -hmm. um, barring one or two small incidences, that, that really isn't what happens in Bangalore. What happens instead is like, you know, like, like I mentioned there was a hip hop community that I used to help run until I didn't. This thing, you know, they were just like, oh, we don't want to work with you. And they just, you know, they try to cut you out of the industry. They talk behind your back. Wow. Um, it, it, it's, it's sad because it's like, if you say you're gonna be a rapper, right, you should be able to like either say to that person's face, or if you can't do that, then, then drop a diss track, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's a, I think in particular in the Indian scene, you still have a bit of this like, oh, you can't talk to me like that. Do you know who my dad is? <laughs> type energy. Yep. And and yep. and that is that that's not hip hop yeah. at all, yeah. right? You're not standing on your own. You're basically your ego is so affronted by any challenge that it's just like, oh, well, this person, they're no longer a person. They're just a problem. And I'm just going to like treat them like that. Yeah. Um, you know, definitely you see some proper beefs. You see some diss tracks. You know, I'll give a shout out. There's a guy, kind of the rapper named Rahul Ditto, who had a problem with a guy named All OK, went and made a whole ass music video where he had a stand in of All OK, like a guy who looked like him in a courtroom. And it was like, that's lit. Wow. That I like to see. That's how you do a beef. Courtroom? What the hell? Bro, it's a, you look that music video up. Just type in Rahul Ditto All OK Diss and you will see, it's crazy. Check it out, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's my answer to that. Wow. Okay. Now, oh, right, now that we've discussed with how the artists are, right? I'm sure you would have your own sort of preferences because you, you come from America. Mm -hmm. So you would have experienced how the hip hop scenes are both there and you are experiencing it here. Mm -hmm. What is your take on the Indian hip hop scene overall? Like, what would you say could be better, maybe, or could be different? So, so overall, right, you know, I don't want to say, obviously, people have been doing hip-hop here for several decades as well. Yep. You know, Yogi B, of like, uh, all those boys in Punjab. Mm -hmm. um, but when you really talk about what, what brought it to the mainstream, there's no two ways around it. It's Gully Boy. Yeah. I, I basically, outside of, like, the state of Punjab and the Mumbai Underground prior to 2019... You did not see this big thing out here. Yes. And now you do. And what that has done 
is because you didn't actually have the culture all the way. You know, people listen to it. They might have even grown up hearing this. But it's different because if you're in America, you'll get on the bus. You'll be in the dining table. You'll be in the dining room in, in the cafeteria at high school. Someone's just banging on the table freestyling, right? Yeah. So we, like the what happens is there it's bottom up. Here, because Gully Boy sort of came out and a bunch of people are like, oh, I don't want to be an engineer. I'm gonna go be a rapper instead, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like uh, it's top down. Mm -hmm. And and what that sort of has done is it's meant that like. I mean, and I don't want, I don't want to generalize, you know, India, India is impossible to generalize about. And, and the rap scene is like that as well. You know, like uh, you go to Kolkata, they have a very fleshed out cypher scene. Yeah. They've been running a long time. You know, here the movement has been running a long time. Um, but I would say in general, like, especially within two things. First thing is, and this, this I'm going to look at the camera. Every one of you guys who is making it, who has 100,000 monthly listeners, if you're not putting on the people from your city who don't have anything, ah. you are cutting your own future income in a bunch of little bitty pieces. Yep. Because you just want your big slice of the pie. But the truth about it is that you're in a current movement that could be baking a lot more pies. He's got a point, guys. Like, it's, like I, I'm, you know what? Uh... Never mind. I'm not going to say that name. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to control myself. But there are, you know, there are people who just could effortlessly, in particular Bangalore, I mean, my, my baby is Bangalore English hip hop, right? Because that's where I reside. Yeah. And everyone who has ever succeeded in Bangalore English hip hop besides, I, I'll give, I'll give a Smokey the Ghost credit. Smokey the Ghost spent a while were after he became as successful as he was, and after he, he's still underground, but he got this rep and he came back and gave some of it back. Outside of him, no one I've ever seen who raps in English and Bangalore who got any sort of clout really came back and helped anyone out. Damn. And in fact, what they do is they sit there and they basically just try to become more and more elite. The problem with this is that if you don't surround yourself with these up and coming hungry rappers, if instead you just surround yourself with what, these clout based life forms and these brands and these managers, three, four, five, six years from now, when that person who was hungry comes up, they're not gonna come up with you. They're gonna come up over you. Yeah, everyone and, should win, right? And if they actually did build up their team when they did it, they're all gonna come up over you. Um, and I just, I just wish that there was a little more, like, sort of, See, I'm from North Carolina, right? J. Cole, you know, prior to J. Cole, prior to about prior to 2014, Forest Hills Drive, mm -hmm. right? You know, we we did not, we were not recognized. Yeah. No, no one be like, you know, you, know, you might, you might, you might hear shout outs to like Houston, Nashville, Tennessee, Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, especially. Right. Yeah. I mean, shout out Atlanta for sure, but North Carolina was not recognized. And the moment J. Cole dropped that 2014 Forest Hills Drive, and he sort of became in that top 10 conversation. Right. The first thing he did is he went back to North Carolina and he was like, we put in everybody on, we put in the state on, we building here. Hell yeah. And when you fast forward about eight, nine years after that, it took him not, they took him like, I think the first Dreamville Festival was probably four years ago. And it wasn't that big. Yeah. And this year, Dreamville, if you go look at the headlines for Dreamville, it is something where you actually, you know, it, it might have been the, one of the best headlines of any hip hop show in the globe. Yeah. North Carolina. Why? Because this one dude made it and he put everybody on. Yep. And now everyone in North Carolina has a bigger pie to eat, including J. Cole. Yeah. You know, um, anywho, sorry. I don't, like I said, I don't want to go too much into that, but I feel this very strongly no, because like, it, if, 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 if the people who are making it don't do this, it's not like the scene won't grow or it won't become this, but two things. First thing, like, especially if you do rap in English, you're not, if, if you rap in, a, in an Indian language, then your market is mostly here. Yeah. And, and those are untapped, right? Or, you know, or, or not, they're not saturated the way English is. Yeah. But if you're rapping in English, your your competition is literally Kendrick Lamar, Lil Wayne, Drake, J. Cole, yep. right? And so if you're not going to push your hip hop fundamentals as much as you possibly can, you're never going to actually play in that lane in English. You're going to be a niche. Yeah. You're going to be, I recently had somebody describe a rapper who will, who will, 
Somebody described a rapper to me who will go unnoticed as, oh, that's the rapper who makes NRI girls feel good about themselves. Wow. Uh, and, and it's true for that, you know, and, and, and that's, not, that's not a bad thing at all. But if, and that's a good place to start, but if you don't take that and keep pushing yourself, if that's the laurels you're content to be on, and if you do get there that right now, you know, you're bigger than everyone else and you're actually making a living off of this. And a lot of those people, they just, that's all they want. But I just like, I don't know, man. I feel like India, India has more English speakers than anywhere besides America, right? It should be, when you talk about what is English rap in, on the globe, it should be the US, the UK, and India, yep. right? And I feel like unless people don't go this top-down model, they actually build it up, they put their city on, they, they respect like the fundamentals of the craft like that, you know, and not just the fundamental, not just the art form, like where it came from, being on those streets, giving back, you know, putting on the next generation. Uh, it's you're you're not gonna. It almost feels like a moral responsibility, right? Well, it's it's a moral responsibility, but it's also if you actually understand the way rap has grown, where it's grown, it's an economic one. It's an economic one. Because if you're just if you're not gonna put these people on, bro, you're not gonna get the you're not gonna get pushed. Yeah. Right, and that brings me back to my own community. Like in Cypher Cypher, like I said, the way we sort of establish hierarchy is who's the best freestyler? Who's, who, who brought the best written verse to this track we're all on, right? You know, there, we, have, we have hierarchy outside of that, but for us, like that's the fundamental. And so like, you know, when, when, when the boys who are coming up through this community, like when they actually get put on, they're, they just have a skill set that's harder. Mm -hmm. You know, because they practiced all that for, you know, months and years instead of people who like, you know, they, they, they got, they, they got like one hit and then they went off and they ran down the industry lane. Um, so it's all about bringing everyone up for, for both as a moral responsibility and also like, we're just going to Yeah, and actually up. this, we, you asked me this question a while back. This is really why, this is really why, like, why would I do Cypher Cypher? Because I, I see both the moral and the economic aspect of, of why you want to actually create community and culture. Fuck yeah, bro. Respect. Thank you, man. Of course. Uh, All right, now, okay, so this is something I wanted to ask you about. Tell me more about Mordecai's Saga, man. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, you, did, you did some Nardwar nonsense here, huh? <laughs> uh, so so that, that is, uh, Basically, we have we have a secret, uh, what you might call like a rap opera. Oh, like uh, or like a musical, right? It's it's a five it's a five part um, storytelling, time traveling, Illuminati uh, sort of rap body of work. Um, it's we and Dope Boy Ghost, and we like. <laughs> He was sitting, yeah, I mean, I don't, I actually, no, that's a spoiler. I'm not going to say that. Okay. Uh, but long story short, like, what it is, is it's like, it's this, it's a story. It is, it is five songs that tell a lengthy story with multiple characters, different timelines, and so on. And, and at the same time, the songs are bangers. Ooh, okay. Um, you know, we made it, a, we made it a while ago. We're current, you know, we did it. It was one of those things we were just messing around. We did it on a bunch of YouTube beats and stuff. Right now, we're actually going in, putting those, or getting those beats reproduced, or you know, having producers do their take on it. Um, have you ever heard of Hamilton? Yeah, it's like that. Wow. But not about history. About like basically, okay, I'll say it. The premise is that like uh, there's a rapper who uh, is missing, and there's a there's a private detective whose job it is to find the rapper, and then things go from there, and there's time travel and the devil and wow. Illuminati and all that. So you deal uh, with all these themes, li themes like the in the sort of like the Hamilton format, uh, and, you, and you made it into Mordecai's saga. Correct, correct. Perfect, man. Uh, when can we expect it to drop? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, we just have so many things that are going on with Cipher Cipher. Mm -hmm. uh, when actually, I, I need to go ping a few people about a few beats now that you remind me. Okay. But you know, probably uh, February, March. You know. We want to, we, we'd want to build a little more uh, emphasis on the collective as a whole, get a little more in the limelight before you put something like that out. Okay. So that like once, because once you're in the limelight and then you do something that different, it'll hit different. Correct. Than if you're just still completely underground, you're like, guys, look, I did, I did a story. And they're like, well, you, have 12, you have 20 monthly listeners, no one cares, right? Yeah, it's the truth, it's the truth. Um, but yeah, no, I mean. But so soon enough after Cypher Cypher's, some of the work is done, uh -huh. we we'll get more to Kaiser Saga. Exactly, excited, exactly. Excited, man, excited. But uh, yeah, that, that brings me to my, let's bring me to the end of the podcast right now. I ask this to everybody who comes on and I mm -hmm. want to know what you, what your 
you know, take on this is, but who are some of the Indian artists that you want to work with? Let's say from, let's say from the Bangalore scene, who you haven't mm -hmm. worked with just yet. Um, I mean, I would say, like, it, it's a funny question because I, I, in some ways I would just answer, I have a lot of, there's a lot of the boys in Cypher Cypher who I feel like I haven't made the music that I'd want to make with them yet. Oh, shit. Um, you know, I, I shout out to Ali, uh, Ali. S SPB. Okay. Um, you know, I got a song with Cube now, so that's there. Uh, you know, I would say sort of a more wish listy uh, type approach on this. Mm -hmm. um, I would want to make song. I, I, I'd be. It'd be very cool to make a song with Rahul Ditto. I think he's a really talented uh, artist in Canada. Okay. Um, I would want to do. It's it's funny. I know everybody. Oh shit. Right. So the, in some ways, asking this question is like I feel like I'm playing favorites, right? <laughs> um, and, and I've actually made songs with a lot of people, even if they haven't come out. Uh, but, you know, I would, I'd love to do a song with HMK. Um, I want to do it more like his old stuff than some of his new stuff. Um, his, my favorite song by him is Genghis, and that would be, that'd be a treat to see him bring those oh, kind of bars. Genghis goes so hard. It's so hard, bro. So I, hard. I, you know, just like, uh, I always, you know, whenever I think about him, I just think of that scheme, you know, cycles over fences. Yeah. Motorcycles where my friends is these cycle like that that to me that's the kind of stuff I like to see out here, you know. Um I would say outside of that Okay, let's say someone on like the you know, on the more generalized industry scene in the in the entire world. Haha. Uh -huh. I mean in, in industry I like uh I like Sikandar Kalam. I think he's very talented. Mm -hmm. Um I if I if, if I could just say one name that it would just happen, they just popped up in front of me and I would just like get into a track. Honestly, I would be blessed to do one with, with Bohemia. Bohemia, ooh. That would be dope. That would be really dope. Yeah, I, I think, you know, Punjab has always been... They right. haven't really updated their subject material in a long time. Yeah. But it, for whatever reason, they didn't have to. They didn't have to. Yeah, right? Because it's still popping. Like, if you take a look at what Sidhu Muswala has done, mm -hmm. RIP, but he still kept the status quo of the Punjab rap the same. He, he, in fact, even made it so much more better, some would argue. So much sort of the point where he's collabed with Divine and collabed with so many other people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, exactly. Perfect, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, man, I mean that, uh, I think, you know, long, like worldwide, honestly, I would just, I would love to collab, uh, you know, Cole, Cole would be the dream. Oh, yeah, Cole would be I don't even, I don't even know. Cole, Cole, I feel like I would know how to make a song with. I, I, Kendrick, I would just be like, I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm worthy. <laughs> you know, oh, um, Lil Wayne. Lil I mean, Wayne. my name's Carter. His name's Carter. Yeah, of that, course. Uh, that would be dope. Carter versus Carter or something. That'd yeah, be cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, G, as a, as a, a man can dream, right? <laughs> yep, the good old American dream. All right, perfect, man. Yes, so sir. happy to have you on. And that brings us to the end of the podcast, guys. Stay tuned. Absolutely.